It's Friday, December 10th, 2021, and I'm Dave Sobel. Two things to know today. The data around the changing world of work asks, is this all a scam? And what surveillance of employees does to morale? This is the business of tech. Another romp through the world of work. Meta and Lyft employees have been told that while they are reopening offices in January and February, respectively, the option to work from home will still be on the table. Glassdoor released a report that predicts a walk back or a reduction of location-based pay adjustments. That's among a landscape that Upwork's Freelance Forward survey indicates involves a lot more freelancing, contributing $1.3 trillion to the U.S. economy in 2021 up $100 million from 2020. The study also found that 59 million Americans performed freelance work in the past 12 months, representing 36%, or more than one-third, of the entire U.S. workforce. Pulling from Tech Republic, one of the interesting findings is that freelancing is growing among highly educated workers. Some 51% of post-grad workers did freelancing work up 6% since 2020, while the share of high school graduates or less freelancing has declined from 37% in 2020 to 31% this year. Skilled remote freelancing also continues to grow in 2021. The research found that 53% of all freelancers provided professional services such as computer programming, marketing, IT, and business consulting in 2021, up from 50% in 2020. And related data coming out of the Boston Consulting Group, which found that 73% of worker respondents said they plan to switch positions in the next two to three years, while 40% are currently job hunting. Most, at 63%, said they were looking due to wanting better career opportunities in other roles, while the desire for a new challenge was at 49%, and feeling undervalued in their current role, 36%, as also significant contributing factors. Nearly all, 95%, wanted to work remotely, full or part-time. The capper to this segment, Bloomberg Businessweek's exploration of the world of consultancy around the chaos in the world of work and return to the office. A core premise is how fear, uncertainty, and doubt are catnip for consultants. A significant comparison, Y2K consulting. Why do we care? I did a webinar this week actually focused on the opportunity in the world of change of work. Well, I'm self-aware enough to say I'm one of those consultants exploring opportunity. There is confusion in this space, and thus there is opportunity. And it's also true that there's a lot of space for charlatans. My take? The two are not at odds. Just because something is not fully known doesn't mean organizations don't need help navigating it. The desire is a single answer. There isn't going to be a single answer. This space is a collision of people and technology, and thus why IT providers are in the mix and should be focused here. But searching for the one answer is an exercise in futility. The direction instead is to try, test, measure, and iterate, finding the unique solutions for each customer. And unique is why this is a good space for consultants. While I'm talking people today, I wanted to break this story out on its own, quoting extensively from ZDNet. A report by the European Commission's Joint Research Council warns that employee, remote monitoring, and surveillance tools could be severely damaging to relations unless balanced by putting power in workers' hands. Based on findings from some 400 articles, the JRC report found that workplace surveillance has grown more pervasive through the datification of work, particularly with the expansion of algorithmic platforms used widely in the gig economy by companies like Uber, Deliveroo, and Amazon. Remote working during the pandemic has also seen an increase in monitoring technologies, some of which, like email monitoring, biometrics, wearables, and webcam and screen recording, prompt a very strong sense of privacy invasiveness among workers. Work-from-home orders might have led some organizations to implement employee monitoring tools arbitrarily as a solution to the management challenge it presented. The researcher notes that technology is not a replacement for proper management techniques. If you're a manager in an organization who is trying to scramble to work from home suddenly, and you've been given technology that tells you what your colleagues are doing at their desks, and take pictures of them, that might be seen as a surrogate 
for the performance side of it. It's not. Why do we care? I'd spotted, and while I'm linking to it, I didn't cover, a piece about automation driving employee satisfaction. Instead, this research is about the negative impact of that technology, and I highlighted it in the last piece, too. That expert quote, that's the insight. It's about people management, not management via technology. There's the sweet spot. Play there. Are you still relying on a frustrating patchwork of legacy solutions? Modernize your cybersecurity and data protection with the Cronus CyberProtect Cloud. It's a single solution that combines backup, anti-malware, and endpoint protection management. As an MSP, you can easily improve client security posture, eliminate complexity, and generate more recurring revenue. Learn more about a Cronus CyberProtect Cloud at acronus.com. Thanks for listening. There'll be a bonus episode this weekend, and I will talk to you again on Monday. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines posted at businessof.tech. Like the content? Support the show at patreon.com slash mspradio or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. If you want to reach our listeners, visit mspradio.com slash engage.